and welcome. This is a lesson for year 13 chemistry students. It's all about one version of the iodine clock reaction. Iodine clock reactions are a really good way of investigating the effect of concentration on the rate of a reaction. They're good because they're simple to perform. However, the understanding behind them is quite difficult, and that's what this video is all about. In iodine clock reactions, there's normally two reactions happening simultaneously, one which is affecting the other. In the reaction we're talking about today, this is the first step. This is the step that we're going to be investigating. It reacts peroxidized sulfate ions with iodide ions to make sulfate ions and iodine. Iodine in aqueous solution is a reddy brown colour, and so this goes from clear to being reddy brown. However, in iodine clock reactions, instead of just having one reaction that steadily changes, the iodine product is quickly reacted with thiosulfate to produce iodide ions back. This top reaction is a slow reaction which gradually creates iodine, and the second reaction is a fast reaction which quickly uses the iodine which is made in the first reaction to produce iodide back again. The other thing which is added to the solution is starch, which changes to a deep blue-black colour when iodine is present. The starch is present to make it very obvious when the change occurs. When the chemicals are mixed, the top reaction will start and will slowly create iodine. That iodine reacts very quickly with thiosulfate to remove it and create iodide back into the reaction. The reaction is set up so that there is more peroxidized sulfate than there is thiosulfate. The top reaction will continue creating iodine and the bottom reaction will stop when the thiosulfate runs out. At that point, the iodine is no longer removed from the bottom reaction, so the concentration of iodine increases and the solution will suddenly turn black. The reason the reaction is set up this way is because if we know exactly how much thiosulfate we put into the reaction, we can work out via stoichiometry how much iodine has been made and how much iodide has been used and how much peroxidized sulfate has been used. So let's say we put in one millimole of thiosulfate. That tells us that at the instant it turns black, one millimole of thiosulfate has been used up. It also tells us that half a millimole of iodine has been used up. And because iodine is only created in the first reaction, it tells us that the top reaction has created exactly half a millimole of iodine. And by extension, we've created one millimole of sulfate ions, we've used one millimole of iodide ions, and we've used half a millimole of peroxidized sulfate ions. So what was the point of all that? Well, the idea here is to calculate the rate. We can quite easily calculate the average rate of the first reaction now, because all we need to do is divide the amount of iodine made by the total volume of the solution, and then divide that by the time it took to suddenly go black, and you've calculated rate. So half a millimole of iodine has been made. You divide that by the volume to get concentration, and then concentration divided by the time it took to go black gives you the rate of that reaction. Now the definition for the rate of the reaction is where this stoichiometric coefficient is one. So it would be the rate of disappearance of peroxidized sulfate, or half the rate of disappearance of iodide, or half the rate of production of sulfate, or the rate of production of iodine. Okay, so I hope that explains the iodine clock reaction. If you've got any questions, just put them in the comments.